Um, independent of the merits of the case against Lula, and the extraordinary thing about this case is that there's a lot of different <coughs> corruption charges and claims against Lula, including being at the center of the Petrobras corruption, Petrobras corruption. This is always this was always regarded has been regarded as an ancillary case, not very strong. It involves um, kind of obscure questions about who is actually the owner of this triplex apartment that received the benefits. Lula insists that he is not even the owner of the apartment, whereas the state insists that that was just a scam, that he really is the owner and these benefits went to him. If you look at actually what has happened, it's amazing in Brazil. You have first the leader of the country who was elected president, Dilma Rousseff, impeached on charges that, even if you believe them, are extremely petty in the context of the corruption claims lodged against the people who removed her. So you took out the, the elected president of PT, which severely harmed PT, and now you take the next PT candidate, who was president and who likely will be president again, and you convict him on charges and make him ineligible to run for office for the next 20 years. It certainly looks like, whether, again, these claims are meritorious or not, that there is a real attempt to preclude the public from having the leaders that it wants, which are the leaders of, of PT. And so there's a lot of concern and a lot of perception on the part of Brazilians that this is a further blow to democracy, that this is really just politically driven, that there are all kinds of uh, corrupt figures on the right, including President Michel Temer and Senator Aécio Neves, who was the candidate the right ran against Dilma in 2014 and almost beat her, for, about whom there's much more tangible and concrete evidence of criminality, and yet haven't been convicted, haven't even left office. Aécio is still in the Senate. He was ordered by a court to be removed, and now he's been returned, and Tamar remains running the country, even though the whole country heard him on audio approving bribes paid to witnesses to keep them silent. Michel Temer, shortly after he was installed as president, came to New York and spoke to a gathering of hedge funds and foreign policy elites in New York and said that the real reason Dilma was impeached was not because of these budgetary tricks she was accused of using, but it was because she was unwilling to impose the level of austerity that international capital and the business interest in Brazil wanted. That's why they put Temer into office, to, quote, unquote, reform pension and labor laws to make people work longer, to extend their retirement rate, to reduce their benefits. This is what the whole thing is about. So I think it, it has to be underscored that there is reasonable debate about how strong the case is against Lula. So everything is about the underlying attempt to take away the benefits from the nation's poor that PT has legislated for them, to make people work longer hours, to make them have fewer benefits, to transfer wealth from the laborers in this country and the poor in this country back to the oligarchs. That's why Dilma was removed. That's why Michelle Temer is in power. That's why they want to make Lula ineligible. And